so much for joining me here in my shop. I'm uh, going to be putting this record player back together and getting it ready to be shipped out. So in order to do that, I've had to undo a few of the temporary things that I uh, had to do during the testing phase. So I'm just going to give you a quick look just to, because I know you've been following these videos faithfully, so I better show you what I've done. So I've taken out the two temporary ground wires that I had soldered onto the back of these two boards. And I've installed a permanent ground wire from this terminal whose ground to the chassis is rather questionable. Run it back and attached it to a permanent ground here. And I've also installed permanent fixed resistors here. I've taken out the uh, far too large and unnecessary 5 water I had in here just temporarily. And these resistors of course are replacing the wire wound resistor which this was really the cause of all the problems in this unit. It would appear after doing everything that other than this nothing was wrong with this uh, player. So uh, fantastic, eh? Wow, I was so convinced that most of the transistors were fried and everything else under the sun and many many guesses coming to me about dead capacitors and all kinds of stuff. But it turns out mechanical problem with a broken wire and a wire wound resistor. <laughs> so next stage is to put all this back up into the player here, put the front panel on, get the whole thing ready for a, uh, a test uh, when it's all put back together and I'm, I'm really hopeful that this is going to be working really well. I'll get on with that. So I'm just uh, screwing down the boards at this point and I thought I'd take a moment and show you something uh, on the close-up camera here. And uh, if I didn't admit to my error on video uh, clearly, let me admit to it now. Of course, this is the terminal that was loose and causing all the staticky sound and you can see I'm ready to put the screw back in and hold down the board and hold down that terminal. But if you look down here, there's another one, the one I've soldered my new black ground wire too. And you can see it's held down too by a screw. Well, that screw's got to go through this board. So the fact is that I put that screw back in as soon as I took this board out, recognizing that that terminal was going to be uh, loose and had to be held down. For some reason, I didn't do the same with this other terminal. And I think the main reason is when I first lifted the board, the terminal looked to be tack welded or somehow fixed onto the chassis and then once I lifted the board up a little higher I could no longer see that terminal. It disappeared from view the whole time I'm working in here because I lifted the board up and blocked it from my view. I just forgot about it. I, I missed it and forgot about it but apparently I took care of this one over here which I now have to actually remove and uh, reinstall properly. So the board. Well anyway, that's just in case I really didn't make it clear in the earlier videos that I'm the guy who, who you know, I know I was uh, pontificating about uh, manufacturing mistakes and stuff like that. No, it was me. Of course it was me. Okay, so I'll just carry on here. Working away, putting this back together. Okay, it's kind of par for the course, but I got these pretty much screwed down and all set and then realized I left out the little insulating plastic that's supposed to be underneath these boards. So, Okay, let's do it again. Okay, so while I was putting in the plastic here, I noticed... Let's show it here. There we go. You see one corner has been cut off. That's the corner that has the ground lug. And when we look back at the, uh, at the way this is arranged, it should have been pretty easy for me to spot that each board has a ground lug in the corner. One up here, this is the one I left loose that caused all those problems. And the other one's down here, of course. The boards are reversed in their orientation, so whatever is happening in this corner should be happening in this corner. And sure enough, there he is, the ground lug. So I, I basically I'm just kicking myself in the rear here, explaining to myself how it is I should have spotted these things and not and not left this loose for so long, causing endless trouble 
You know, it's almost surprising I was able to find a real problem in this thing with the uh, with the fake problem I introduced. But uh, anyway, all these interesting little indications I missed as I took it apart. Okay, so there we are. The amplifier board all put back together. Grounds are in place. Screws are all in. Insulator pieces underneath the board. The black. Extra ground wire, if you want to call it that, from here is installed. Everything's tight. Looks like it's time to install it. Now, let's see. How did I ever get this in and out of here? <laughs> I, don't, I don't really remember how I did it. How did I do it? Oh, I think this drops in from above. I think that's the secret here. Be the secret. I think that's going to sit like this. That's going to put these transistors kind of where I can get at them a little bit. Yeah, so I can do a test once I get this all together. I seal it up entirely, I should be able to test the two uh, transistors for the imbalance voltage. That there we go. That's not so tough. One, two, three, four, five screws. What I did with my bag of parts here is I've kind of laid it out on my bench, as you can see. Try to put together, you know, like screws and that, so I can see quickly. Rather than reaching in a bag full of parts, I can kind of lay them out and figure out what's going to go where. So I got five screws here. I've got five screws here. And up here, I've got. You know, I can't remember this offhand. I've got five screw points here, and there's the big plastic cover that goes on here. It's got six screw points, so I need five screws on the top, six on the bottom, and I have two sets of five. This must be screw number six. Missing a washer. Looks a little different. Looks like the right size though. But maybe there's something a little different about one of these screw holes. See, these aren't wood screws. They have a metal insert inside here. It's going to go in. I don't know. You know, five screws, six screws, that's not going to make any difference at all. If I leave one screw out, it's not the end of the world. Okay, onward. Okay, so we got that in. Next stage is to put in the amplifier here, or the power supply rather. It sits right up in here. Let's see here. Okay, so I'm going to need to plug in the uh, well, it might be a little easier if I just plug these in now because I got lots of room for my hand to go in here but once I put the power supply in it's going to get a little more awkward uh, kind of random on the left channel right channel here I don't imagine that's a problem okay, we also have this plug which I've got to get in before I I'm pretty sure I have to get that no, maybe not. This sits like this. Two screw holes, one over here, two here, one here. Yeah, for sure it sits like this. Maybe this cord should come out and over like that. So, or do you think it should come around and up and over? Plus, there's a screw down on this. Ooh, a screw down clip. Where is that supposed to go? I remember taking it off. Yeah, 
this will so go quite naturally in like that. So that's how that has to fit. When I uh, take things like this apart, I try not to bend, you know, as much as you can. I try not to bend all these wires too much, because later they will literally fall back into the right place. I won't have to panic over getting it right. Okay. So these are. Oddly enough, these are wood screws going through a metal clamp. By wood screws, I just mean they have a point on them and a, quite a uh, coarse thread, like typical wood screws. Or I guess metal screws, sheet metal type screws. I have to get this back together enough that I can stand it upright the, the proper way um, to play a record. I can't play a record with it up on its side like this, or on its back end, rather. There's one clip there for the power cord. This one here, I'm not sure yet where it goes. Yes, not much bejesus left in me anymore, frankly. <laughs> Thoroughly drained of my bejesus here. this in now because I'm fairly confident that everything's going to work. So this is this relief is very important because people can tug on the power cord and you don't want the tugging to pass up into the electronics itself. So it'll just be tugged to here. Okay, now I have to put the uh, bottom piece here. I guess we just put it on temporarily. Is there a... Oh, look at that. So, so that explains this piece. Here. Somehow this got busted and somebody tried to tape it all back. Why would they even care? Oh, there's one screw hole broken right here. Why would somebody even care about that little corner? Possibly this has to seal pretty good to become part of the cabinet effect that's going on in this record player offhand. I, I don't really think so um, because I think the speakers are contained in, in plastic housings here and the only opening were those vents that go inside of the actual record player cavity but I guess once you're venting into the general cavity, this is all going to be a common airspace, if you like, even though it's below the platter. There's nothing air sealed here. So maybe this is quite important. It's got some foam on it. it runs around the edge. The foam is pretty collapsed here. There's not much left of it. Well, that could just be a good way to cushion this up against the, uh, against the bottom. One of the things you want to watch out for with any speaker console record player with speakers in it is if anything is a little bit loose especially something like this it could resonate at certain frequencies and produce a, a buzz that's not a funny coincidence okay so I think everything's back together That's why I turn the video on when I'm doing these things, by the way. <laughs> so you can see all the things you shouldn't do. Here. Ah. Like, don't grab.
grab it by a hinged part. Okay, that's a bit of a bump test there too. And I left the I left the uh, tone arm just freely wandering around in there all this time. Shame on me! More shame upon me! I think we're all set to give this guy a real test now. Let's see. And I'm gonna find another record since the, the record I was using, the Atomic Rooster record, uh, is going to lead to a copyright hit. So let me see if I can find something a little more obscure. <laughs> 